Hey guys, welcome to the Baker Airsoft and today, as you can guess, I'm doing a review on the 6 Sour M17 Airsoft pistol and it's final here, it's most anticipated it was originally released in May I guess but um, somehow ended up in July uh, rumor says that you know, SIG has a tight quality control so it's delaying the actual releasing date but, um, and the maker of the pistol is VFC, uh, WE and King Arms has had their take on it but in the, in the end I think VFC won the contract and it is not licensing under Humorex or Cybergrain it is actually licensed under Six South themselves under Six Air and they also have under Six Air they have guns like besides Airsoft they have the traditional air guns where you shoot the copper BBs so this is the box they came with and I just got this today so at the back you have some kind of info so and I got the green gas version they have green gas and CO2 on the magazine, so I got a green gas. And at the back, it says green gas is 320 FPS. I'm gonna check that in a bit, and CO2 is 410. I can check it because it's a I have a green gas version, but um, here's what it says. And you know, you got a basic like blow blast slide, hop adjustment. You got a hop adjustment guide. The magazine holds 21 mounts, and it has a red dot mounts plate ready. So let's open it up. So inside you get your pistol and in this section you get a magazine and a I think this is the hop up guide for tuning the hop up and your manual. Okay so let's talk about the gun itself first. So you get all the SIG markings all over except for the bottom you still get the 6mm caliber BBs and made in Taiwan. So these two markings are for airsoft I guess. And you, you know you get your red dot place ready. I'm going to try take it out in a bit and your slide lock is ambidextrous so you can read it on both left and right and the safety is also ambidextrous and I think it's on the stiff side for the safety so it's not as smooth which might be a good thing for some people so the safety here is kind of like the 1911 but it's a lot smaller so you, there's a less chance of your accidentally you know putting on the safety when you draw the pistol as some of you guys who are 1911 owners will definitely have this issue a lot but at least for me when you drew a 1911 um, a lot of time I have to double check the safety because I always kind of have it on when I pull it out so <clears throat> and the trigger I think the trigger is on a bit on the heavy side so you see that's the take up so there's only a short travel space and then you hit a wall and that's your trigger and the reset is at the same spot as the wall so which is good so mag release is only on this side and it's pretty smooth for for the mag to release it So and the magazine itself, now the charging valve is under is at the side instead of at the bottom, which I like. And because you can add something extra at the base place, let's say a silicone cover for you to protect the magazine when you drop it on the floor. So we can add things like that without interfering with the gas charging. So this is so I like it on this side. And as for loading BBs, you can load it up here or you can pull down the spring and load it up from the bottom. And I usually prefer loading the BBs on the bottom because you're because if you're loading up from here, you will double the weight of wearing down the lips because you're feeding it BBs here and you're shooting the BBs going out that way. So you're doubling the weight of the wear of the lips. So loading the BBs on the bottom can definitely is better in my opinion. And the slide, the spring lock, I don't think it's working. For me on the menu it says it will lock but it's not locking in here i don't know if it's just this magazine or if all the m70 models are like i only have one here so so this is the gun itself and now let's do the corner and i'll instead of doing 0.2 i'll also do 0.25 and 0.3 and also instead of a normal green gas which is 12 kilograms by force i will also do a 14 kilograms so to see how much power it can bump up and I'm sure it can take 40 kilograms if this can take CO2 
And it's also interesting to see, or if someone wants something in between the green gas and the CO two power, they might consider consider the fourteen kilograms. So let's do the Kono. Actually, before the Kono, let me just shoot a mag for fun. Okay, so first mag. Okay, so it's actually pretty snappy in my opinion. Okay, so let's try to shoot all of them at once. Oh, I got a jam. When this one got jammed somehow, it the lever does not come out all the way, so it doesn't push up the mechanism here to get a proper slide lock. So here's the first mag. Oh, by the way, room temperature I think is around 23 degrees. So I can recreate the issues that I just had. I think, I suspect it might be some kind of not proper finishing plastic piece inside. So. I think my BB might have, you know, pushed that bit away, so right now I'm not getting any issues feeling the BBs, feeling the last BBs up. So I just done the corner test and with the normal green gas I'm getting about 1.1 joules and with the 14 kilograms I'm getting about 1.2 ish. So um, the 14 kilograms is definitely more snappy, it cycles the gun faster and it feels more awake and more energetic. So I might use 14 kilograms for outdoor and the normal green gas for CQB as the 1.2 ish joules may be over some of the game power limits and let's talk about accessories um i have here the x300 ua and i have the pregatini rail settings but i found that the i cannot fit this in it's just a here and i'm trying to get lighting in there so i'm just missing a little bit more space in order to fit my lights in so I might change it to a universal one. So the universal one is a bit smaller and thinner, so it will fit in better. I mean, it will fit a misbat, not misbat, but a misbat Pegatini rail better, as it has more tolerance. So I'm going to change to a universal one and try again. So as I mentioned, I changed to the universal plate, and it does fit in, but it riddles a little bit, but it does not riddles when you're handling the gun, especially when you're pushing down the fascia, you're pushing out in the forward position. So unless you're pushing the legs against someone, this is not going to move around freely. And since the, since the, this block here on the universal one is smaller, it's thinner and a little bit lower. It is just tight enough to fit in the rail. And it is also because it's smaller, it creates this rail here. But overall, it can fit. And then you get a hole for lanyard. And as for holster, if I'm having it with the lights, I have a LPT6099. Universal holster will fit the M17 with the X300. So, well, now let's take a look at the inside.
so this wheel is for the hop up as mentioned you can adjust it with the wad here So as you can see this gear here rotates with the wheel in inside the chamber. So to I guess to turn the hob. So at the outer barrel and the inner barrel is locked by this pin here. So you pop this pin out, you should be able to take the inner barrel out and then I see there's a screw here there's a Phillips screw right here so I guess after you take this out you unscrew the Phillips screw and you can separate the chamber for to change the inner barrel and the hub and the buggings so that's that so I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do it here at the moment because I'm still deciding if I'm keeping the gun or not and as for the red dot plate um, it looks like this piece is all the way back here so I'm guessing if you unscrew the three screws here you can pop up the plate and I'm going to do it right now so from what I've heard they will be releasing a red plate for the Romeo 1 and it will be for the airsoft version of Romeo 1 so it will not fit the real thing so they don't want to, they don't want to mix the airsoft and the real stuff but I'm sure some other companies will come up with different red dot mount plates for the M17. So I took the M17 to a gun range and basically just shoot around and play around with it. And there are some things that I noticed. Um, the hob is very strong, and I mean, I was using at first I was using 14 kilogram gas with 0.2 BBs, and down to a range, I almost hit the ceiling with the average hob settings. So then later on, I switched to lowers, and I'm still getting more hob. So. I have to use 0.3 grams PVs with top gas and at down 20 meters range when I'm aiming at around the chest area it will rise up to around the neck area so the hop is definitely something that you need to adjust for maybe you need to change the buggings when you get the guns um, but underward um, less than 20 meters at 5 10 meters is fine wherever you aim it is hitting that palm size place without any issues so overall it is a like fun gun to shoot with and if you are change the hot buggings with 14 kilogram gas I think you'll be happy with what we have and things I like and don't like um, I like how it is rather ready so you don't have to purchase a brand new slide and then the hop you can adjust the hop up without having to take down the slide off so that's what I like about the gun and things I don't like is the what is the hop again and then the surprise I think it's only expensive side but then if you are having to follow what the US Army or, or if you're dressing like the US Army then you have to have the M17 so and also please leave comments on for the gun reviews so maybe which part you want me to show more you, you want me to elaborate and which part you want me to show less so it will help me to a better review later on so this is for today and thank you for watching